Hey everybody, I know that there are a lot of questions about how to do Dr. P's assignment. I've met with him a few times and I told you guys that I would put this together. Those of you that asked, um, there's still, there was quite a few of you, so I made this instead. To answer question number two, you are going to have to do standard deviation and a t-test. So the way that I set up Excel is to have my first frequency, my second, and then my trials for my DP averages, which you can find on your sheet, then eventually you'll average and get a standard deviation. Um, in addition, you will need your noise floors. Uh, this is just how I set mine up. You really don't need frequency one and two because you are doing four different frequencies. So you can really instead just write eight, um, I believe then it's six, four, two, and one. Um, so if you'd rather do that, oh no, I'm sorry, it goes to 500. So if you'd rather do those instead of the individual frequencies, by all means, it really doesn't matter. Um, it's just how you want to present the information. Now how you actually assess the information, um, I'm making these numbers up so they're super easy just for the walkthrough. So what you're going to want to do is look at your tracings and you want to find what your DP values were. So let's just say 11 for, I'm only going to do two trials so you get the idea. So uh, let's say at 8,000 I was 11 and 12 and then uh, I'll just keep it pretty similar throughout. I'll just say 10 for the rest of them. Again, these are made up numbers. It's just to help you calculate. And let's say on all of these, my noise floor for both of these trials was negative 20 throughout. Um, for my setup, I did repeat the frequencies one and two down below, um, just so I reminded myself when doing my noise floor. And also, it looked really, I guess it looked kind of nicer when it was all typed out, because I did copy all of these into a Word document for my analysis. So, in order to actually average now, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to select the trials that you would like to average into the blank average column. You can see up here, this sigma function, there is an average button. As soon as you hit average, my average of these two numbers is going to appear. You need to do this for all of your input numbers at all of your frequencies. Now remember, don't cross frequencies, so you want to go across trials per frequency. So that's just how you get your average. Now additionally, you want to do this for your noise floor. So again, I'm not crossing frequencies, I'm going across trials. So I want to average my noise floors as well. Now, if at any point you can't find the average, you can do more functions in the sigma and you'll find it. Now, the next thing that number two is asking you to do is to find the standard deviation. In order to do this, you're going to want to go into more functions. And the little bar pops up on the side. I've been using standard deviation. You need to double click it and it should answer in here. Now, in order to best do this, what I've been doing is erasing whatever automatically puts in because it's been selecting a lot of weird stuff. What you want to select for your standard deviation is the trials that you've been doing. So for this, obviously, it's only going to be two trials, but you should have all your trials across. So when you first get your standard deviation, double click, erase what it already has, and select what you're trying to do, so the two trials. Once you have this, you can hit enter and it gives you your automatic standard deviation. Now, when you go back up, again, you're going to have to hit more functions. The bar pops up. You can do standard deviation, double click, which brings us, again, see it selected something. I don't really want that. And then I'm going to select the thing, my trials that I want hit enter and I have a standard deviation. Since these numbers are the same, there is no standard deviation. That's why I did one with and without so you can see. So obviously if they're all the same, your standard deviation is going to be zero. 
Once you have all of this information, now is when I do my t-test. This is the part that gets a little bit confusing. So in order to set up the t-test, what I do is I go back to my functions, I'm going to do more, my bar will come up. My t-test is already in here because I've been doing them, so double click just like you did before. Now on the bottom here, it has various things. Array 1 is the group of things that you are comparing. So my first array is going to be all of my DPs that I'm trying to do per frequency. My second array is going to be all of my noise floors per frequency. Then for tails and type, I just want to type 1. So while it's in array 1, I'm going to select what I would like. So I'm going back over here, and for my first array, like I said, I'm just doing my DPs. So when I look over here, it has array 1, what I've selected for my DPs. Now I'm going to select my noise floor. That's what I'm comparing it to. So that's in array 2. So I'm going to select my noise floors, and that's what's going to be entered in array 2. For my tail, there's only one. For my type, there's only one. And then I'm going to hit enter, and it should show up back in my box. So now that all my information's entered, that's my t-test number. So you're going to do this for each frequency. So for this, like I did before, double click. Now I'm doing the next frequency down. Make sure they're frequency specific. So those are my two DPs. And again, you'll have more DPs based on your actual information. This is just a short tutorial. Now I have my noise floors in. That's my second array. One tail. One type. Hit enter. Oh. Oops. Sorry, sorry, guys. All right. So anyway, if this happens, all that it means is that you didn't put in your information correctly. Um, also, this is telling me you can't divide by zero. All of your data, you're not going to have <laughs> the exact same 10 numbers across the board, so you're not going to have to worry about dividing by zero. That's just how you do the input. Sorry, my example was silly. Um, so anyway, how to evaluate the t-test now? It's continuing to add things, so if this ever happens, you can always start over. So now that we have a t-test number, and again, array 1 is going to be your DPs, array 2 is going to be your noise floor, this is the number that you are comparing to the p-value. The p is less than 0 .05. So looking at this, he then asked the question, is it less than? Well, this number 0 0.005, yes, that is less than 0 0.05. Since this is less than, then that means that this test is significantly above the noise floor. Then all you're going to do is you're going to look at your data just like before. You're going to look at your signal to noise ratio, which is the last column, and you're just going to see if it's over 6. Then you can compare the two. So that's how you actually um, do the second part of the test. I'm going to make separate videos for each portion. I hope these help. Um, so just to review, you want to set up everything in terms of your trials for your DPs. You're going to average them across the trials per frequency, find your standard deviation, and then your t-test. For your noise floor, you're going to set up separate trials, find your average, and your standard deviation. In the t-test, your array 1 is your DP values. Your array 2 is your noise floor values. Again, across trials, your um, tails is going to be 1 and your type is going to be 1. And you can enter that in there by selecting everything. Now, once you have everything set up like this, what I did, oh, sorry, that's another test. I'm just going to scroll up. Okay, um, what I did for this is I told Dr. P that all of mine were above, but that I put everything on a separate graph. Um, I just copied it and pasted it into Microsoft Word to make it a little bit nicer. But here's what my actual data looks like. So I have frequency one, all of my trials, my average, standard deviation, and then my t-test. And then if it's less than the actual set p-value. All right, I'll see you again for question three.